Hi everyone, Nicholas Bofidis here from Sunny Cypress and welcome to today's tutorial. This is a, a tutorial I've been asked to create by many of you guys. It is the November 2023 paper, paper three for the ICT IGCSE examination. And it's very popular because it is exam period in some countries right now. And this is the most recent paper three, uh, which exists right now. Now, as always, I've taken a quick glance at the question paper. This is something you should do as well before you start working. And as always, in the like the most recent paper threes, it's not very packed. It's not like the paper two, um, but you do need to pay special attention to the questions and you need to take your time so that you don't make mistakes. And any time you do have at the end, remember, make sure you're looking at your printouts, make sure you're looking at the question paper and seeing everything that's been asked for you from the question paper, you can actually see it in the printouts. So you don't work from the electronic files. Now for the web design, I use Dreamweaver. I do know some of you use things like Notepad or Note++ and you actually write the code. So I applaud you for that. Um, I will be where I'm going to be taking my HTML source code and my CSS style sheet. I will have that um, on screen as well. So you can pause it and you will be able to see the code that's been generated just so it can give you a tip on how to write that code. So um, enough said about the paper. Let's get started. OK, so the first step is make sure you've got all the files needed for the examination inside a folder somewhere on your PC and make sure all the files are there. We're going to open up the question paper. I've got the electronic file here. You probably have a paper version as well. So here's the question paper and the question paper starts off. So there's the first page up there. It starts off by saying, make sure you have the source file. So quick step, you're going to double check you've got all the correct files. Now, step one, take a uh, task one, evidence document, create a new word process document. Make sure that your name, center number and candidate number will appear on every page of this document. Uh, doesn't say where, so you can put it anywhere you like. Save this document in your work area as N23 evidence followed by your center number, candidate number, and it gives you an example. And you're going to use this evidence document for the evidence. Okay, so let's get started with that. I'm going to right click in my folder, new Word document. Um, I'm going to save this as N23 evidence, N223 evidence. And then I want my center number, CY127, and then my candidate number, 1234. And I'm going to open this. Now, N23 evidence is small letters, so I need to make sure I do that. I'm just going to double click in the header, and I'm going to enter my details. And again, it doesn't say where to add your details. Now, in this particular case, we're creating the evidence document. So I'm going to be putting little labels um, whenever I'm going to add a spreadsheet or sorry, uh, a screenshot so as to help the examiner. So now I can minimize that and get on with my paper. So we've done task one. That was painless. I don't think I get any marks for that. Right. Task two, file management. Create a new folder called TGS in small letters. Locate the following files and store them in your TGS folder. So I'm going to be taking these files here and putting them inside the TGS folder. Display the contents of your TGS folder, showing the folder name, the name, file names and file extensions and image dimensions. OK, take a screenshot to, uh, of this folder and place this in your evidence document. So let's begin with that. First step, I'm going to right click in my folder. I'm going to go to new, create a folder and call it TGS with small letters, that's how it was named. Now I'm going to select all the files that it told me. So I want N23 feed, that one, MP4, uh, 23G graph, uh, head, logo, text, N23 text, and GS. So I'm holding the control button for multiple selections. Control X to cut. I'm going to open my folder and I'm going to paste. So there are my files and you can see I've already got my computer set up to show everything. But um, the, the, essentially what you would do is one of the best views is going to be content view. And that's this view here. And if I close that preview there, you can see that it shows me the dimensions of the video, the pictures, the file name, the extensions and the file type and when it was modified. Now, if you don't have this and it doesn't show this, you can also do this from the one of my favorite views, the details views. 
but what you don't get by default is the dimensions of pictures and videos. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to right click on any one of these headings here. I'm going to click on more. I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for dimensions. Now it's in alphabetical order, so this shouldn't be too difficult to find. There it is there. Click on that, click on OK. And now it's added the column with the dimensions. So if there's any other field that I would need to show evidence of, uh, the details view is probably the best because you can add anything you like. So I'm going to take a quick screenshot of that. And I need to make sure that I'm also taking a screenshot um, with the folder. So you can see this bit here, that needs to be displayed. Otherwise, you lose the marks. That's evidence that you've made that folder. So I'm just going to remove the highlight there. And I'm going to put this in my evidence document. So this was number one, file management, press enter, and put my picture there. Now, again, guys, me, I'm using dark mode. Please don't use dark mode. It doesn't print very well. I'm going to choose save and close there. Now I've done that. I can go to my question paper again. We go to task three. And here we see we're going to be creating a web page. Just so you're working as part of a team of web developers at Tawara Web and have been asked to create parts of a web page, parts of a web page, and edit a style sheet. So I'm going to be editing. So it's going to give me a style sheet for a local giraffe sanctuary. The web page and style sheet must work in any browser. All color codes must be in hexadecimal. Make sure that your style sheet contains no HTML. Make your HTML and style sheet as efficient as possible. So efficient programming techniques are required. So it starts off number two. Create in your TGS folder a web page called TGS.htm. And this web page must be created using a single table and work in all browsers. The table must have a structure like this. Now. Can you see it's not giving me any dimensions? There are no percentages. There are no uh, pixels uh, saying the dimensions of this table. Um, let's just see what it's going to say. Each table cell is identified with a letter which must not appear in the final web page. Place in cell A the image that, that, that. Add appropriate alternate text to all images. Use inline style attributes to make sure that the logo fits the full width of cell B. So it's not saying anything about the size of the table, the cells, it's not saying anything about borders. Um, I'm assuming a star sheet here, if I remember correctly. So you're gonna add text in cell D. The video and source tags are going to be inserted there. And there you go, you've got a star sheet. And if we look at when we're going to be making the star sheet, and there you go, can you see? It then is going to tell us in the star sheet to nominate the size of the table. So it's going to be 85% of the browser window. Okay, and borders and grid lines must not be visible. So it, if I start now, I can just create a table. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm not going to set dimensions or anything, anything important, because these are going to be overridden by the star sheet. So whatever I add, it will be overridden. So let's begin. I'm going to start off by opening up Dreamweaver. Now, again, I use Dreamweaver, guys. Um, if you're using anything else, by all means, the coding is going to be the same. So you can use the coding which I'm going to be displaying here. Now, I'm going to start a new web page, file, new, HTML. And I'm just going to click on Create. And then first step is I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to save this in my folder, in the TGS folder, as TGS. TGS, HTML, or HTML, that's fine. Click on save. There we go. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to identify how many rows and columns I need. So remember the trick I've uh, taught you in previous tutorials, you're going to extend all the lines. So extend that line and then that line. And you, you see they're a little bit tricky here because they've made the column um, cell C and D taller, making it look like it's actually two rows, but it's not. And then I'm going to extend these lines. So we've got that one, that one, that one, that, 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 and that. So now if I look at this table, I can see this is a three row by three column table. So that's all I needed to know. I just need to make a three by three table. And you can you can identify the type of table really easily when you do that process of ex uh, extending the lines. 
first step is I'm going to click in the WYSIWYG area because currently my insertion point is outside of the body tag. So clicking in here will put my insertion in the body tag, making sure my table is visible. I'm going to go to insert table and I'm going to create a three. There you go. Three by three table. Now this says the table um, is going to be 100 percent. It doesn't matter. We can make it what we like. So I'm just going to leave it 100 percent if you like. Because we've read the question paper, we know it's going to be 85% of that um, window. We can make it 85% now. But I'm going to leave it like that so you can see that everything is going to be overridden. Border thickness, yeah, leave it as zero. It didn't ask for anything. And again, we saw that in the style sheet um, later when we attach it, it's going to override the properties for the border. So here it is. I need to make my table look like this. So I'm going to merge the first column and then merge that part there. So first part is I'm going to select these three here, which is basically a row span. And down here, I've got my merge button in the properties. If you can't see the properties, make sure you go to window and click on properties. Or I can simply right click and go to table, merge sales. And you can see the code here. It's a, let's just do that. So row span three, because it's spanning over three rows. And then I want to do a call span of two because I'm going to merge these two cells here. Again, I can just right click table and merge cells and that will put the call span two. All right, that's our setup. Now I need to place in cell A the giraffe. So in cell A, that's that big one here in here so i'm just going to go to insert image and because i've saved my html file in the same folder i can find everything here now it doesn't say that the images should be 100 percent width of the cells or anything like that so i'm just going to add the pictures in i'm not going to make any changes um, in cell b i want the logo so cell b is that top one it's actually really small there it is there so i'm going to go to insert image i'm going to put that logo in there and then in uh, F, the image N23 head. So F is that bottom one down here, right down there. So F, the image N23 head. So insert image, and I'm going to put the head of the giraffe. Okay, now I need to add my um, my appropriate text. Now this is, I've got my uh, screen zoomed in, so it's easier for you guys to see, but I think I may zoom it out in a short while because it's just going to make it easy for you to follow. But anyway, I'm going to click on my giraffe here and I can add, here's my, my image source for my giraffe in the code. I can add my alternate text, but in Dreamweaver, I can just add here an uh, image of a giraffe standing. Remember, don't just put one word, oh, standing. Um, it, it's there as alternative text for visually impaired people. So make it a little bit easier. Uh, head of a giraffe. And up here, I'm going to put for this picture here, I'm going to type in alternative text, uh, the Tawara Giraffe Sanctuary logo. Okay, so I've, at, I've placed my alternative text. And if I go back over here now, it just says then use inline style attributes to make sure that the logo fits the full width of cell B. So for this particular one, if we have a look, I'm just going to make that a bit bigger over here on the text. We can see that this image here, it's got its dimensions. Width is 800 and height is 200, which basically means my uh, logo is not going to be adjusting size. It's a fixed size. And I want that to be the full width of its containing cell. So I'm just going to delete that code from there. Now you can, you can mess around with the widths and the heights at the bottom. I don't do that because half the time they don't work. I'm just going to delete the height and then for the width, I'm going to make this 100%. And remember, we remove the height so because we want the height to adjust automatically. Uh, so if you do put the height attribute, it's going to implement it. If you don't put the height attribute, then it will adjust automatically maintaining the aspect ratio. So now when I click on this side, there we go, that's adjusted automatically and slightly looks a little bit better. Now, can I change these as well? Yes, I could. And would I lose marks for doing something extra? No, providing that if the result does not affect something else that I should be doing. 
but I'm not going to adjust anything just to see what comes out of this if I don't do anything at all. Personally, I would also adjust these, this one here to be 100% height, and this one here, I don't know. I, I would have a look and see what the final result looks like. But let's leave it exactly as the paper tells us. So that's that part done. Place in cell D the text n23text.txt. So, uh-huh. And then in E, we want that text. So let's go place that. So I'm going to go to my folder. So my folder is here. I'm going to open up n23text. And I'm just going to copy that, Control A, Control C. Let's just close that now, put that down. And I want this to go inside cell D. And cell D is this one here. So I've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I'm going to paste that in there. So I've got my text. Then it says, place in cell E the text page created by Let's just copy that, saves me a bit of time, uh, by Tawara. And then it's got a full stop space, last edited by. So I'm going to copy that. And that's going to go in cell E. So it's A, B, C, D. This is E here. There, and I'm just going to paste that there. Great. Let's go back again. Okay, uh, followed by your name, center number, and candidate number. So I need to add my name by now. Again, this is looking really messy. That's fine. Just leave it alone. Let's just do what it's it's telling us to do. And don't forget, mine is going to look look a little bit more messy because my screen is actually zoomed in. So I've added that information there. Let's jump over. So place paragraph break after the full stop in cell E. So there was a full stop here somewhere. Yep, there it is there. Okay, so we want to go to that full stop. Now I could just press enter, but the correct way to put a break would be to use the BR tag. So clicking on here will actually put my insertion point in the code here. And right after the full stop, I'm going to put a break. So colon BR. And now when I click over here, we can see that has started with a new line. Okay, so that's putting that break in there. So next step, set all the text in cells D and E in style H2. So I'm going to select that, go down here and just choose heading two. And again, you can see that tag there, heading two, opens there and then closes at the end of that text. And I'm also going to select this text here, and make that heading two. Now remember, I'm going to give you a copy of this code as well when I take the screenshot and you can pause the video to have a look at the code in, in a neater fashion as well instead of it being clumped up like that. Okay, so let's jump back over here. So number five, use video and source tags to place in cell C the video file N23 feed. Set the video width to 480 pixels and the height to 360 pixels. Include video controls. Display an appropriate text-based error message if the browser does not support this video type. Okay, so let's go to this one here. I'm going to go to insert, HTML, HTML5 video. That adds this uh, control here. So it's inside the TD, uh, the video, and then it's got the first attribute, which is controls. And what I'm going to do now is I want to click down here in the properties and put the source. So I'm going to click on the folder. There's my video source. Double click on that. So it's added the source. And if we just bring that in there. So you can see. So there's the video controls. And we'll see what that is in a second. And I've also added my video file. Then the next thing I need to do is to set the width to 480 pixels and the height to 360. So I could, and I, I could show you here again. So if I click on this thing here, down in the properties, you've got the width and the height. Now I could just put one in here and see what happens. So the width is supposed to be 480. So if I put 480 and make sure that's pixels, when I click over here, look, look at that. It's actually put the width for me. So it's actually worked. Or I could just type it straight after the video uh, tag. So I want the height as well. This one, I'm just going to type this one in. Height equals to speech marks. 
and that should be 360. Okay, now when I click on this side, we see the width's adjusted, the height's also adjusted as well. So perfect. So these things here for videos usually do work. For images, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We won't get into the do's and don'ts and why it doesn't work. The idea is you should understand a little bit of HTML coding to be able to do um, some simple uh, adjustments like this. What width, height, breaks, and so on. Right, the final thing is um, I need to add an appropriate text message if this video file format is not supported. I can add that right after, just before my video tag closes, or I can just click down here with the video selected. When I've got the fallback text here, I can say um, video file type is not supported by your browser. Now remember, don't just put one word there. Um, make it a little bit more realistic. And as soon as I click over here, we can see, there you go, it's added before the video tag that text for me. So basically that will display if somebody's browser cannot support to play that video. So what is the controls? It asks us to put controls equals controls. There's the code there. I'm going to do a quick save, file save, and I'm going to open my HTML file so you can see what the controls are. So the controls essentially are these things here where we've got the, the volume, the size, and the play button. Now, if I was not to use those controls and I was to put here, get rid of that part there, because so I've, had, I've had a student ask me about this, and now I save this, control S to save, and open that file again. We can see there are no controls on this video, and I'm clicking on it, and it won't play. There's no way to get this into work. So we need the controls so that the user can actually control that video type. And you can see my, my web page is actually not looking too bad. It's, it's, it's reasonable. So, right, let's go back, and I'm just going to click on undo, so my controls go back. Great, I'll save. Okay, so now let's go back to the question paper. Okay, so the next step is we're going to open the star sheet. Um, have I done everything there? Yes, I have. Open the star sheet n23gs.css and correct the mistake in the CSS. Edit this style sheet to meet these specifications. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Dreamweaver. And usually whenever it says you have to edit something, it usually means that that code is totally messed up. So let's go have a look first. File open. And I'm going to open up my style sheet. There it is there. Now, this particular style sheet, obviously, it doesn't seem to have errors in there. Um, it just wants us to modify this style sheet so that it... It has basically the attributes which they want, which are described over here. So I'm not going to delete all of that. I'm just going to modify this. So essentially, it says that the table must uh, be aligned within the browser window. So that's going to be the margins left and right of the table. I don't care about the top and the bottom. So the first step is with my table tag selected here, I'm going to click to make sure my CSS designer properties are available. If they're not, you can just click on window and just make sure CSS designer is there. And the next thing that I do, I always do and tell my students is make sure you expand this a little bit to the left. So this small properties window takes, so as I expand that, takes the whole height of the screen, making it so much easier to work with. So here's my margins. So there. Okay, so there's the margins here. I'm going to adjust the margins of the table tag. I've got the table tag selected and I'm going to change the left and right to auto. So I'm going to click on the PX here, auto, and change that to auto. So that's giving me the code margin uh, dash left auto, margin dash right auto. Next. So it says the table must fit 85% of the browser window. So for that, I want to go to the width of my table. So here's the width. I'm going to click here where it says auto, and I'm going to change this to percentage. Change that to 85%. And now I've got here width 85%. Okay, next one. So now it says uh, table borders and grid lines must not be visible. So table borders and the grid lines. So if I go back, 
I can see here I've got the table tag. I've also got the TD. And both of these are exactly the same. And it says that borders should not be visible. So I can get rid of this line from here. Okay. Because it's exactly the same for the table, which is the external line and the internal line. So I can get rid of that one. And the reason I'm getting rid of it is because it says I need to use efficient programming techniques. And I'm just going to put here comma TD, uh, sorry, table. So this property affects both the table and the TD tag. And for board, I'm just going to put that to zero. Now, do I need to get rid of the solid and the color black? Well, I can. It really doesn't make a difference. The fact that I've got this to border zero percent, zero pixels, means there's going to be no borders there. So that would work. And we need that border um, zero in there because if in the HTML code, the border of the table is one or two, if I don't put here, the border is actually zero, it won't override it and take the borders away. So this is why we need that border zero. Okay, so let's go over here. Table cells must have padding of 20 pixels. Okay, so let's go back. So the, the padding, the cell padding is part of the TD. So I've got here the attribute here for TD and table. I'm going to need a new one just for the TDs. So I'm going to click on plus sign, TD, press enter, enter there. And now I'm going to go to the cell padding here and it says 20 pixels. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on that link here. And that's going to change all of these at the same time. So instead of me having to enter it four times, I can just enter here the value 20. And when I click away, all of these are 20 because it's linked all four, top, bottom, left, and right. So table cells must have padding of 20 pixels. We've done that. The background color of the web page must have. So here we can see it's got this background color and it's got the red, uh, the blue, the red and the green. So this should be RGB. First, the red. So this should be AA, BE, D8. That's the correct order. So let's go back. And that is the background. So for the background image, I'm going to use the body tag. So I'm going to add body. Enter and enter. And then from here, when I go to the background properties in my CSS over here, I can now see the background color. And I'm going to enter the hex code. Remember not to remove that hashtag. So the red component is AA, the green is BE, and the, uh, the blue component is D8. Okay, press enter there. And there is my background color. Okay, next part, styles H1 and H2 must be set so that the browser selects and displays. Comic Sans MS, if this is not available, the browser must select Comic Sans font. And if neither of these are available, the default Sans Serif font. Okay, so I'm going to just add just the H1 tag for now, and then I'm going to attach the H2 as well. So H1. Generate a new one there. And I'm going to go to my font over here, my CSS styles, my designer. And now for the font family, I'm just going to choose anyone that has sans serif at the end just to make my life a little bit easier so I don't have to type everything out. Um, so, yep, that one will do. I'm going to select that one. So for the font family, I'm going to delete all of these and I'm only going to leave, let's just delete this solution. I'm only going to leave the last one, which is sans serif. And that's the font that will be selected if nothing else exists. So the first one that I need is, let me just copy this, the Comic Sans MS. So I'm going to, the first font is this one. Now this has got spaces. So I need to put this in speech marks. And that way it knows that Comic Sans space Sans space M is the name of one font, not three. So that will be the first choice. Then it's going to add, Let's copy this one over here, Comic Sans. Then it will, if you can't find that one, it will use that font. Again, I need speech marks for that because it's got a space in between. And then I need to put a comma here. So there we go. The first font that will be used will be Comic Sans M. If that's not available, Comic Sans. And if that's not available, the default Sans font. Great. 
Okay, um, stars H1 and H2 must be blue with no other color components. So RGB, red, green, blue. Um, so I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to, so this is again for H1 and H2. So let's just put that H2 before I forget. So this is for both H1 and H2. And also the color of H1 and H2 is the same. So let's just click over here. And we're just going to use the color. So click on the text and go for color. And I want, it has to be blue with no other color components. So zero, zero for red, zero, zero for green and FF for blue. And there we go. So heading one and heading two has that color and that font family. Anything else? Place your name, center number, and candidate number as a comment at the start of the star sheet. Save your star sheet in the TGS folder. Place a copy of your star sheet in your evidence document. Make sure that the contents are easy to read. Okay, so um, let's get on with that. So the first thing I need to do is to put a comment at the top. So I'm going to go to the very top. I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to write a comment. Now, if you can't remember how to uh, enter a comment and you're using Dreamweaver, just go to File, New, Create a New CSS, and you can see there's the comment. It's a slash star. And once you've seen that, and you close it with a star slash as well. Once you've seen that, you can copy it like that and close that. You don't need it. And up here, you can paste it. So I'm just going to get rid of what's inside here. CY127, 1234. And you can just type that in. But you have to make sure you close that star slash because if you don't, then all of this is seen as a comment. You can see it's all gray now. And that basically means none of this will be read. Okay. So you have to make sure you close that star and that slash. Right. And the next thing is, all right, save your star sheet in your TGS folder. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As. It hasn't said what name I'm going to give it. So I'm just going to overwrite that one. Just I can't. I'm just going to click on save. I'll save. You could give it a new name, but I'm just going to click on save. So that's all saved. And now I'm going to go to my question paper. And that oh, I do see. I've actually highlighted that bit there. Uh, I needed to attach the star sheet. I didn't attach the star sheet. So let's just go and attach it now quickly. It doesn't make a difference. Um, it, it's not an action that you have to do beforehand. So I'm just going to go to my web page and let's just get rid of that bit there. And from here, I'm going to go to class at the bottom in the properties. Now, there's multiple ways of attaching star sheet. This is just my preferred way. Attach star sheet, browse. I'm going to go find the star sheet. And there it is there. I click OK. And I should be able to see all the things that I've added in that um, in that star sheet now in this window this is because it's zoomed in it's not so clear so i'm just going to go to file save and i'm going to open this in my browser and see what it looks like there and there we go it looks great and so we can see here our table doesn't have borders that's the first thing we can see that it's in center aligned in that window so we it's 85 percent of the window size and you've got the equal gap on left and right. So on this side and this side, if I adjust this, there you go, the table changing that. We can see that the banner at the top, the logo actually changes um, as I'm changing the size of this window, but the other pictures aren't. And that's because the banner at the top, they asked us to change its width to 100% of the cell. Whereas the pictures and the video, they didn't ask us to do that. Now, could we have changed them? Yes, we could. Would we lose marks? No, we wouldn't because they didn't ask us to apply any kind of width or um, sizing to those images. Providing that we maintain the aspect ratio, we could have made these as well 100%, but that's not an issue. This works fine and it fits nicely in my browser window here. So everything looks good. All right, so now that that works, we know that works and we've tested it. Let's just go back to the question paper, see what we had to do. So we attached it, we made the style sheet, everything works well. Um, we are now going to do, right, so we now need to put a copy of the style sheet in our evidence document. So, and make sure that the content is easy to read. Okay, so let's go back. And we're going to close that, close that. Go to our CSS, we're gonna take a copy of this, 
Control C to copy, go to Model Word, my evidence document. I'm just going to write here number seven because this was question number seven. Style sheet and paste there. Now that's spreading over a couple of pages because it's got some paragraph spacing. So I'm just going to select that code, go to the paragraph. You don't have to do this, but just get rid of this after space after on the paragraph. But if you put it like that, it's so much neater, so much easier for your examiner to see this. And I'm just going to leave that there for you. So if you are actually writing this in code using a Notepad++ or any other type of text editor, that's the code that you're going to be writing or something similar to that. So you can pause the video and have a look and just double check what you're doing. OK, so um, I've added that. Just click on Save, go to my question paper. Now, display the web page in your browser, take screenshot evidence and place this in your evidence document. Make sure that all the page can be seen, all the text can be easily read, the address bar is fully visible. Now, it doesn't say that it has to be all in one screenshot, but we've seen that in my example here, I can actually put this in one screenshot. So effectively, if you have been doing this correctly, you can fit it in a screenshot. Now, please be very careful with your screenshots because that's the evidence that you've done the work. So I'm going to create a new screenshot and I'm going to take the whole browser window. Have a look at this. I'm going to take that whole window. And what I need to make sure is in this, I can see, I'm just going to ink on this and I'm going to remove it. I can see. This is center aligned in this area here. So I've got equal gaps on this side. I can see the address bar at the top, which shows the name, the folder, and the name of the file where this HTML file is. And I can see all the components clearly. And I also can see that this is inside a web browser. Okay. So these are the things you need to be careful of and just make sure you're giving the examiner exactly what they're asking for. So I'm just going to go here, go down. That's number eight, a web page in browser. Do you have to write these things? No. Should you? No, but it is good because the, the, the better it is for the easier it is for the examiner, the better he'll be, the nicer he'll be to you. I'm just going to adjust the text wrap here and put that in front of text so I can just move this into the margins and just make that a little bit bigger. But that's more than fine and that should print nicely all the text is easily readable my address bar is easily readable so i can move on click on save and now i can go back to this display the html source in your editor take a copy of the html source and place this in your evidence document okay so let's go back into dreamweaver and this one I'm going to display my source code so that's the source code the html source code is this here so i'm just going to click in here Control a Control C, go to my evidence document, click here. Now this is uh, this text, let's just bring that down a bit. Is it my enter button? There we go. Now this text is quite long, so I'm going to go to the next page uh, to get all my code on one page. So this is going to be number eight, eight HTML source code, enter and paste that there and it doesn't have any paragraphs uh, spacing afterwards so i'm going to leave that like that get rid of any unnecessary spacing look at that all of my code on one page and that's really neat okay so i'm just going to take that in a bit more so guys there's the code um, again if you are writing your html in uh, using html code that's the code for you to write or something similar and um yeah perfect we can move on from that click on save now I can go back to my question paper. OK, so we're going to start with task number four, which is spreadsheets. And we're going to have a look at the paper. We're going to read everything that is there. So it says here, you're going to create a spreadsheet to calculate the income and expenditure of the sanctuary for one year. All currency values must be displayed in Tawara dollars. So that's going to be a dollar sign and to two decimal places. Well, two decimal places, well, that goes by default if you use currency. Open and examine this file in your spreadsheet software and very important for you to examine it. Remember, these newer syllabus papers, they're all about you examining the data and understanding that data. Save this as a spreadsheet with the file name TJS Center Number Candidate Number. Place in the header, left aligned your name, center number and candidate number. Right align automated file name with its file path. So let's begin with that. 
So the first step is to open the N23TGS. That's going to be back one step. So that's the TGS folder which had my web page in there. I'm going to open this one up. And the first thing I'm going to do before I start examining this, I'm going to save it with file, save as, and I'm going to save it with the name. First of all, make sure it's an Excel workbook, change it to TGS underscore center number underscore one, two, three, four, my candidate. Number. And then click on save. Just going to check up here. There it is. There's my file there. And this is an Excel workbook file. Let's just make that a bit bigger for you. All right, so um, first step, I need to examine this. So I'm just going to select all of these and just double click between two columns so I can make sure everything is readable. That. Okay, so I can see here I've got an income and over here expenditure, and then I've got some titles here. So this is probably for the income. I'm going to be calculating some kind of total here. This is the expenditure area. And again, a total, so income and expenditure. All right, see what the difference is. With. And oh, there you go, we've got a profit and a loss. So depending on if we've had more income than expenditure, then we've got profit, otherwise it's a loss. And then we've got a balance, a balance of what we'll see in a minute. So probably, anyway, we'll see what that is. But we can see we've got income and expenditure. I'm a little bit familiar with what's going on. So we've got income from entrance fees, a shop, feeding, donations, and expenditure on staff. Uh, feed, utilities. Okay. All right, I'm comfortable with that. So I'm going to go to my question paper and start moving forward with that. Okay, so now we want to put left aligned your name, center number, and candidate number. Uh, that's in the header. You can see that there. And right aligned the automated file name with its file path. Okay, so let's go here. We're going to go to view going to go to the page layout we can see the header section up here so on the left hand side I want your name center number and candidate number and then on the right hand side in the header again right aligned I want the automated file name with its path so I'm going to first put the file path so that will be displayed first and then the file name. And now if I go to view normal, oh, actually, let's just click over here. There we go. We can see the file path and the file name. My details on the left. Uh, let's just put that correctly. And now I can go back to my normal view. So if I click here, go back to normal. And if I do go to do a printout now, file print, I should see up here my details. Great. Okay, so next part number 10, it says insert two new columns to the left of column A. Insert in column A the text as shown. So that would be that text there. Okay. Format the spreadsheet to look like this. Okay, so this is where. <laughs> Um, I, I, whenever I'm doing these videos, I always leave something out. You always call me out on it, guys, and I'm really happy that you do because it means you're paying attention. So I'm going to try and, and do all this without making any mistakes. Let's see if you can find a mistake this time. All right, so I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet here. And the first step is to insert two columns. So from here, I'm going to go to column A. I'm going to right click insert and right click insert. And that now is giving me two columns as requested. And I'm going to add the, now I'm going to try, I'm going to open a little program here. You might actually like this. So I don't normally do this. I'm not affiliated with any programs, guys. So this is, a, this is not a sponsored channel, but I'm going to show you a little program I use quite often. It's called TurboTop. Okay. And I kind of like this. It puts this uh, down in your taskbar down here. And what it does, it allows you to float a window on top so it's always on top so i just want to put my question paper on top so i'm just going to put let's just bring this question paper here okay i'm just going to make that small okay i just want to make it small just so i can see it and work uh, and while i'm working i've actually got that question paper there now when i go to down here my taskbar and i go to turbo top i can see my oh there if i click on this now even as i'm working here 
can you see I'm clicking here, this window is always on top and that's just gonna help me to make sure I'm not gonna make any mistakes, hopefully. All right, so let's begin. So inside A, um, I know it's pretty small, but we'll get there. Um, in A2, I want month. And then after that, in A3, I want previous month. And that is, um, so rows one and two are a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to select row one and two. I'm just going to expand them a little bit. And then row three is about double the size. And this one here is text wrap. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to alignment and just bring that there. I'm just going to put wrap text, click OK. Now, if it doesn't wrap properly for you, so let's say um, this column was this big and you wanted month to start on the other one, then if you hold the Alt key on your keyboard down and press Enter, it will wrap it around. So it will break that line for you. That's a, a nice little tip there for you. Okay, um, so I've done the two columns. Column B is very tight, just about that letter size. And I can see I've got the same for column H and column M. I'm just going to do that now. Anything that I see now, I'm going to do now. And hopefully, I'm not going to miss anything out this time around. Okay, next I can see I've got that income and expenditure. In fact, it actually says here the sales, let's just make that a bit bigger, the sales C1, G1, and then I1 to, I, uh, to L1, N1, N2 have been merged and center aligned with 16 point white text on a solid black background. Wrap all text as shown. Place in cell G4. Right, so I'm just going to go do that part now. So let's just make that a bit smaller so I've got a view of what's going on. So I'm selecting this up to G. And I'm going to merge. I'm going to merge and center. And then this one is up to L. I, to, I want to L1 merge and center. And then we've got this profit loss one here, which is in N1 and N2, which has been merged. There we go. It actually says it down here. So it's actually there. And so I'm just going to select N1 and N2, merge those. And you can see in this case, it's not wrapping around. So I need to go and wrap that as well. Let's just move that out of the way. So wrap text, click OK. And I'm just going to click before the L. And I'm going to press Alt. And while I'm pressing that, press Enter to break that. Oh, actually, mistake before the slash. As I say, I'm going to try not to make any mistakes this time. So I'm going to select this one, this one, and this one with my control button. I'm going to make the text white and the fill color black. Now, I can also see it's a sorcery font, and it's center aligned and horizontally and vertically. So I'm also going to adjust that so that they are vertically aligned as well. Um, on this side in column A, I want the months. So I'm going to start January. Uh, click away. I'm going to just copy this down so it auto fills the rest of it up until December. Perfect. I'm going to double click here to make sure that fits. Column A is right aligned. So B is narrow. C, all of the numbers are right aligned. So now I've got these things here. These are center aligned and they're also vertically aligned. The balance, I'm going to do the same with that. Okay. Um, is there anything that I'm missing? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to pause this video for a second. For me, I'm just going to double check because I don't want to make any mistakes on this one. Okay. So I do have something which I did spot. I forgot to add this to be 16 points. There we go. So that's a bit better. And I also need to format all my numbers. So I'm just going to move this window out of the way now. I'm going to format all these numbers from now. I mean, chances are I'm going to have to do this again afterwards when I put some other things in there as well, but it wants it as dollars. So I'm just going to go for currency. In fact, that's pounds. No, I want dollars. So I'm going to go to more number formats. Click here and just go down and find English United States. There we go. Click OK. All right. So I've got my dollar signs in there. Um, I think I formatted everything. 
I'm not chopping anything off. Everything seems to be wrapped correctly. If I have me something out, by all means, give, call me out on it. All right, so the next part of this question paper is as follows. So I've done that, number 10. Place in G4 a function to calculate the total income for the month of January. So this is January, and then for the month of January, the total income is this one. Okay, well, that's a simple sum function, e equals to sum. And it's really unusual because a lot of these things that they're giving you to do these days in the spreadsheets are so basic, just really easy functions. There we go. And it's automatically picked up the currency symbol. Now, it hasn't told me to copy this down yet, so I'm not going to. Okay, so then it says play. So we've done that. Place in L4 a function to calculate the total expenditure for the month of January. So now we're going to do the expenditure. So the total, that one there for January. So that's going to be an equal sum again, because this is all the expenditure for January. Now, this hasn't adjusted, so I'm just going to double click here. I can tell that there's a number there because of those hashtags. Double click. There we go. OK, let's jump over again. Place in N4 a formula to calculate the profit for the month of January. The profit is the total income minus the total expenditure. Okay, is that it? Simple. So in N4 equals to the total income minus the total expenditure. Guys, this paper is just, the, it's a joke for IGCSE level if you ask me. But anyway, it's good for you guys. Uh, back to the question paper. Place in O4 a formula to calculate the balance. Now, this is the one that we didn't figure out. At the end of January, this is the balance from the month before. So the month before added to this month's profit loss. So in O4, I want the month before. So if, I, if I'm in February, the month before would be the balance January. So maybe that's what this is for. And that should also be uh, money currency. I'm just going to click on that. Click on the Format Painter and click on that there and adjust that. So I'm assuming that it's going to be equals to whatever's inside here plus whatever's inside here. That makes sense. Whatever your balance is from the month before, you add it to your profit loss. If it's negative, it goes down. If it's positive, it goes up. OK, makes sense. So I'm going to say that's done. Replicate formula entered in steps 11 to 14 for each month. OK, so now we're going to replicate that. So I'm going to click here, copy that one down. That was the first one. That was the second one. And that was the third one. And that's the fourth one. Oops. And it should actually copy that down. Now, I always like clicking on one of these that I've duplicated, clicking on the formula bar, and just making sure I don't have any issues with absolute or relative references. So that one's OK. So for this one, yep, it's using the correct ones. Escape. And this one, it's doing that minus that, which is OK. And then for this one, it should be the top one plus the bottom one. OK, so that looks good. I'll just do a quick save here. I'll save and go back to my question paper. OK, apply appropriate formatting to all numeric data. Well, I've done that already, haven't I? Um, I've already put all my uh, units for currency dollar signs. Apply conditional formatting to all cells in the range N4 to N15 so that if the cell contains a negative number, it is shown as white text on a red background. OK, so N4, which is this one, all the way down to N15. We're going to do some conditional formatting. Go to Manage Rules. From here, we're going to add a new rule. That rule is going to be based on the contents of that cell. So a format only cells that contain 
a cell value less than zero. I'm going to format the background. So the fill color is going to be red and the font color is going to be white. Like that, click OK. Oh, actually, I'm on the wrong one. No, I am. No, I'm not. I'm, I am. I'm on the right one. N4 to N15. I thought it was going to be on the balance. OK, uh, apply and OK. So I can see I've got three items there which are negative and those have been highlighted. Just double checking. Um, I do want N4 to N15. Correct. Okay, so the next one, placing your evidence document a screenshot showing the conditional formatting rule, cell range, and format. Okay, so let's just go back to that. So again, I'm going to select the cells, go to my conditional formatting, manage rules, and I'm going to double, there you go, I can just use this. Um, I can open this up, but this won't show the range, so I'm just going to click on OK. This is a better screen because we see the cell range here. So I'm just going to use that one and take the whole screen there. And that shows the range, the formatting, and also the condition, cell value less than zero. Go to here, go down, go to new page, conditional formatting. This was um, number 17, 17, condition. Okay, that's good enough. Save and minimize that. And now I can go to my question paper. And now we've got save your spreadsheet, print the spreadsheet showing the formulae. Make sure that the row and column headings are displayed. Page orientation is landscape, and the contents of all cells are fully visible and can easily and can be easily read. Now it doesn't say how many uh, pages it has to be, so it can be more than one page. So let's go have a quick look over here on our, on our spreadsheet. First step, I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to, sorry, uh, we're going to go to formulas and we're going to go to uh, show formulas at the top. Now, next step, I'm going to click in this corner um, tab up here and then double click between two columns. And that's just going to adjust all the widths of all the columns to make sure that everything is displayed. So I can see all my formulas are displayed. Everything here is displayed. And now I'm going to go to the print. So I'm going to go to file, print. And I can see that it's not showing everything. It's two pages. That's fine. I can print that like that. It's not an issue. But I, I want to make it fit. So let's just go add, before I forget, um, the row and column headings because we need to show uh, page uh, row and column headings are displayed so there they are and now the, what else i'm going to do i'm just going to go to the page setup go to the margins now it didn't tell me i have to uh, put any fixed margins so i am allowed to change these if i want to so i'm just going to reduce the left and there we go and by reducing the left and right margins it's actually made a bit more space for my table to fit on one page and again that just makes everything easier for the examiner um, my details are on the header and the file name and path in the header as well. All is good. So all I have to do there is just go to print. Now, um, I'm, I can print to my PDF printer. There's really not much point doing this. You would choose your printer and click on print. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm just going to go back and we're going to go to the next part, which is team. Now it says print your spreadsheet showing the values make sure that the printout fits on a single landscape page so now it has to be a single landscape the row and column headings are not displayed and all the contents are fully visible and can easily be read all right so let's go back and we're now going to go back so we're going to go to our formulas remove the show formulas again i'm going to click on this corner tab up here double click between two columns and because everything's changed i just want to make sure everything is absolutely fine so now what we're going to do we're just going to make sure that these uh, b h and m are smaller everything's fine nothing has been messed up so that's good so i'm going to go to file print uh, again i'm just going to make sure this is landscape before it was already landscape so i didn't need to change that um so that it's landscape i want to get rid of the row and column headings so i'm going to go to sheet and remove that and it's kept my margins from before so now that the table is actually a little bit narrower as well then 
um, it fits perfectly on one page. The header is displayed and everything is visible. So now I can go ahead and print that off. Okay, so I will just print that again, uh, print it uh, to my PDF printer. You will print to the actual printer. And yep, there you go. Let's go to the next one. So we'll go back. And now we go to our question paper. Okay, number 20 says the October donations were entered incorrectly. Okay, in October, the donations were 4210. Correct this data in the spreadsheet and print the spreadsheet showing the values. The printout fits on a single landscape page. Row and column headings are not displayed and the contents of all cells are fully visible. Okay, so basically exactly the same as before, only this time we need to change uh, donations. So these are donations and for October. So, ah, there we go. So this, instead of it 421, it's actually 42.10. Press enter. Aha. And we can see now we had a loss that uh, conditional formatting has worked. So that's turned red. These values from here on would have changed as well. So these are the things that the examiner is going to be looking for in this printout. So they know that you've actually done this correct. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to print that off. File print. Uh, again, I mean, this is um, the settings are just like before, but just double check them. Print single landscape. So I'm on landscape. Um, it's a single page, no row and column headings displayed. Everything is visible. So I will just print from there. Okay, I think that's done. Do we have anything else in this paper? Okay, so task by printing the evidence document, make sure that your name, center number, candidate number appear on every uh, page of your evidence document. Save your evidence document, print your evidence document. So all I really need to do now is just go here, open this up. I'll save, I'll print. I hope I haven't forgotten something in the evidence document, but please don't count that as a mistake if I have. Um, the idea is once you've got all your printouts, you're going to spend the rest of the time that you have so I'm going to call that evidence. Okay, so the idea is, guys, that now that you have basically finished this, um, what an easy paper that was. Relatively easy. You can see it takes time for you to analyze the spreadsheet. You need to take some time with the Dreamweaver part or the web uh, design part. Just be a little bit patient. It might look a bit messy. Just double check that you're doing everything correctly with the spreadsheet, analyze that data first. Be careful that you don't change any of those values by accident, especially when you're duplicating formulas down and be really meticulous about the formatting because every single thing that you miss is one mark. Now, if I have missed something in this paper, call me out on it. I really don't mind. If, if you do call me out, I'm going to be adding any mistakes that are called out and are actual mistakes. I will be pinning them as a comment uh, the pinned comment of this video. So anyone watching this video, you can actually see if there are any errors that have been identified. Apart from that, if you are taking this exam, you found this useful. Um, if you have learned something new, as always, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you again in the next video. Take care and good luck with your exams. Bye-bye.